All right, spring of 1760, troops are down. Um, hmm. A little bit of resurgence. The Turks are able to b rebuild their army somewhat. Uh, there's still no Prussians, of course. Uh, Spaniards struggling. I mean, they're down still at zero manpower now. And they've got new navies in place for whatever that may help. They're going to try and break out somehow, you know, just try to make some kind of lucky shot to get out of here. But it doesn't look good for them at all. They've, they're overwhelmed in Spain on land and overwhelmed over here in the Americas at sea uh, without much real hope of things changing. Well, Austrians were able to strengthen themselves with all their minor allies, etc., they really got a big gain without much cost to the country as we can see the Austrian points are still fairly high so I guess we push on alright things are off to a bloody start at this uh, spring turn the Turks launched an attack on Macedonia which was repulsed and the Russians came back and hit them and drove them almost completely out the Crimeans went in and took Moldavia actually but the Russians went back there, drove the Crimeans out, and took, uh, got two hits on the uh, fortifications there. Uh, on, during the Prussian turn, the English reorganized their forces in Hanover to face the French, perhaps. They also attacked the Spanish, and this was perhaps a mistake. Uh, although the Spanish have less ability to survive attrition, and the British want to get their troops out of North America as soon as they can and as long as they control the sea uh, maybe they can afford these kind of attrition losses of course they don't have the manpower to really handle it so it may be difficult for them to conduct the operations that they want to especially if they're having pressure put on them in Europe alright onward well ending the turn the British uh, didn't move forward the French I don't think the Spaniards did much. They chased the English out of uh, New York. The French failed against the HRE, but they took Granada. They're up to 12 points, but Austria is also up to 12, and 12 is a lot scarier with Austria in charge. What they gained, they gained uh, Württemberg, where the English were. They drove them out into Switzerland, and then also attacked the HRE and took the actual territory as well. Austria's looking scary. They took one hit on Saxony, and they took Magdeburg. They're not far at all. They need like three more points before, uh, before they're at the victory level. Of course, they have to hold that until winter, which might be tough. If you're at that level, you might see France, for example, uh, violating the, the alliance or something. All right. Uh, looks like we move into the summer. Okay, so here we are in the summer of 1760. The Spanish were mainly locked down. They have some forces now in Cartagena that are sufficient maybe to hold it, but not to really engage in an attack, at least not against Granada. And if they lose Cartagena, they lose everything they have on the mainland, really. They have Minorca left, and that's it. They attempted a couple of naval actions here out of Venezuela, and actually the blockade is broken. More because of a Caribbean hurricane, which I believe the Russians played, uh, which sunk the damaged ships. The Spaniards ended up in here, and then Hawk gathered his forces together. The English could have made an attack in conjunction with the Navy up into um, New York instead, but the odds were not very good. And they want to wipe out the Spanish Navy before they move forward against the army. The Spanish army, though, now can march into Virginia at decent odds, actually. So it's kind of an iffy choice to have sent Hawk out. Uh, what else do we have? We had the Turks who gathered their forces and attacked here in whatever Macedonia. And they were victorious, but only for one round. They only fought one round of combat, and that wasn't sufficient. Uh, and the Brits fled into Mecklenburg in order to help protect against the uh, Austrians. 
Oh, there's interesting choices available for the French. I think they may go in and try to capture Mecklenburg, force the Austrians not to have an easy attack. Of course, the Austrians could always slide through since they're allied with the French anyway and, and move towards Hanover, but they don't have a leader, so it's kind of hard for them. So that would be a good move for the French, and I think they're going to take it. Actions have gotten a little fiercer. One thing I didn't mention, the Swiss that were wandering through Piedmont, they went and captured Marseille, which drops the French total to 12. But let's look at what else happened. Uh, the French themselves moved in and took uh, Hanover, which was worth three, brought them up there, essentially. Uh, the Russians, the Russians moved, they took Moldavia, but they moved up and attacked Transylvania and took a point away from Austria that way. Uh, someone else took points from Austria, no? I'm not sure where why they're so low. Austria is at 3, 4, 5, 6, 10, 11, 12. They should be at 11 because they lost a point uh, at Transylvania. Now, after that, Prussia, well, the Dutch gave them a free corps, which they've added to Cumberland's forces. Um, but then the Dutch also went in and marched into the Netherlands. And they've only half taken it, and they sailed their fleet into the West Med. So they've entered this war fully now. They're attacking the Austrians. Uh, pretty much everybody sees the Austrians as needing to be stopped. It's just too dangerous and too close at this point. I um, guess that's about it. Now we have the Austrians left, and we can see what they can pull out of their hat at this point. They're in some definite trouble, though. Well, the Austrians were able to take Mecklenburg. They moved a large army down to face the Russians down here. And they're still not done with Saxony yet. Uh, it's really, really unlikely that they're going to win this turn. The Dutch are probably going to take the, uh, the Belgian territories. And there's just not much else going in their favor. Point-wise, they could march up into Denmark or attack the French, but they kind of don't want to do that. As long as France doesn't have to attack the Austrians, both sides kind of would rather not have it happen. Uh, but if Austria is about to win, France will, of course, attack. <sighs> Likewise, uh, don't know quite what we're going to see with the Turks here they're probably going to try to regain their territory rather than attacking Austria. Which is bad news for the Russians, who aren't all that far from winning themselves at six. But such is life. Um, now we got a whole pile of new units coming in. Um, many of them the Austrian miners, etc. So, yeah. it's possible they could gain ground somewhere. It's tough, though. I mean, for example, they didn't want to go into Hess. They could have done that. But had they done that, it would have meant moving this pile into Saxony instead. They don't need Saxony. It doesn't help them win the game. But if they don't win it this turn, they want the extra production that Saxony produces for, as the minor power. So they don't want to lose it either. And they certainly don't want to backstab Saxony. Uh, not with a unit available. Okay. So... Well, we'll see how it goes. So we enter the fall of 1760, and player order has been determined. The Austrians will very poorly and have to go very early in the turn. You'll see uh, the English and the Prussians have a little bit of space between them. They didn't really see a need to go early because the Spanish have the option of moving during the Turkish turn, and the Spanish are probably going to take that to make the attack into Virginia again. Uh, at least that's my thoughts right now. All right, well, let's see if Austria can pull off a net positive of two monetary points. If they do, they win. Uh, Russia would need a positive of four, which looks like really, really unlikely, given that they diverted into Austria. 
the Turks are probably going to take some of their territory back uh, because of that. The who else? France is not going to get eight, I don't think. No one else is really up there right now. I think Austria is in trouble though because they've got Dutch coming in here. They've got Dutch taking four away up there. So I think Austria is on its way at, down for the same reason Spain was on its way down. They look too big. They look too close. And you know you got to stop the guy who's about to win. Okay, so to open things up, the Turks took Rumelia back, but they suffered heavy losses, and those losses are going to face supply problems here in Macedonia, where they attacked from. The Austrians took their turn, and they only took one thing, Hess. Uh, but I was mistaken. The Transylvania hadn't fallen yet, so the Austrians are actually at 16. They're temporarily high enough to win. Of course, the Netherlands is still there to fall. They didn't manage to take Saxony, but they did move more troops into Transylvania perhaps to prevent the Russians from being able to take that. This puts the Russians in kind of an ugly position. They went out of their way to attack Austria, and now uh, they're going to be in kind of an ugly war situation, I think, against both Turkey and Austria down there. Um, let's see. Well, speaking of the Russians, we're up to them and the Dutch and the English. The English already moved some of their forces? No. The Spanish moved some of their forces in the Turkish turn. They marched into Virginia, but they failed to take it. And they split their fleet out uh, to try to collect some money and manpower in case they can survive in Europe, at least. Oh boy, look what the Dutch have. Ten victory points. That's enough to win. Right? Holland, Russia, and Turkey need ten each. They haven't made it through the turn yet, but they took the Netherlands, which is four. They took uh, Tuscany, which is three more. That's seven. They took this over here, finally. They paid two bucks each so that they could siege as much as they like. And they've already got Galicia. Well, now everybody's got to stop the Dutch from winning. <laughs> And that just came out of nowhere and just blindsided everyone because they need so few points to win. And they've been kind of playing it real quiet all game. Let's see uh, if anyone's got enough forces left. France may be able to do it. Prussia sure can't. Britain has a lot of units that they moved already. All right, let's see what we can do. So the French just took Venezuela. And I had the numbers wrong. The Austrians are at 6. The French are at 10 now after Venezuela. Uh, and they moved into Holland to attack. Now they're going to... They paid 2 bucks, which means they can attack as much as they like. They've got 8 dice against 5. I'll come back to see what happened. Well, the French managed to save the day. They took Holland. So the game goes on. And we go into the uh, bookkeeping. And... Oh, I garbage. Bother. <laughs> Into the winter. Ah, well, I was hoping the Dutch pulled it off there, but nope. And now, where are we? Well, the French are sitting at 14 victory points, not that far away. Nobody else is in great shape except our good old Dutch, who were at 10, but are now down to 6. Which isn't terribly good at all, especially since they've now got everyone's attention. Uh, they're in trouble. <laughs> um, and we'll see, we'll see how that works out, but I don't think it's going to be too good. I think it's going to involve the French getting the Netherlands, which they're very capable of holding, and they're probably capable of holding Holland as well. France is now a dangerous country, and I think a lot of people are going to consider moving against France. Of course, Austria is still very, very potent and very capable of winning the game, I think. They need nine points to France's six. It's much harder for Austria to get nine, you'd think, but hard to tell because France looks like they're ahead. On France's favor, however, they've got fleets out in the Caribbean and the Western Atlantic. 
they've managed to break out, which means they're going to get a big influx of money, and that's going to help them a lot. Alright, let's see what happens at the end of the turn. Okay, so mostly at the end of the winter, I'm leaving the diplomacy for when I'm a little more awake, but everybody was able to pay for everything they had on the board, actually. The only... A lot of people don't have much on the board, though. For example, look at how many English are dead. How many Prussians, of course, are dead. Uh, Spain, France, they all have these piles. Turkey, of course, have piles and piles of troops. So they've got a lot of stuff that's not on the board. And some people have money and manpower to spare. France, for example, has tons of money and manpower right now. And they got a couple of units they can build. Um, probably going to see the same deals cut here, which is to say the Russian Dutch money tr for manpower trade. The Spanish probably will not offer as much money to the Turks as they have previously, although the Turks really do need a decent amount. So they might come close like eight bucks in exchange for those two manpower. Uh, the Spanish definitely need the manpower. This is their ally. They can't find anyone else who's got tons of extra manpower other than that. The Russia-Dutch combination, well, both of them are in a position to sort of win the game. The Dutch are a little closer, but they also have a little bit more attention on them right now. The Dutch also have the problem that they can't build troops as long as Holland is, uh, is held. They can reinforce, from what I can tell from the rules, but they can't actually build new forces. All right, well, I'm going to load this one up, and we'll see what tomorrow brings. We'll be going into uh, 1761 tomorrow. <laughs>